Hey guys, how's it going? So why would I put out another what's in my camera bag video when there are already so many videos out there? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about why you should own less gear and why so many photographer filmmakers become gearheads. We're going to talk about how you can avoid that craze and carry the absolute minimum amount of gear while sacrificing the least amount of production quality. been a goal of mine to carry one moderately weighted backpack so I can actually go and enjoy the expeditions, hikes, and adventures without the constant worry and concern about my gear. I don't have a home base where I can leave excess piles of gear. But I want to continue to live in various places and experience new things in the world. So I need to be able to carry all of my gear with me. So if you have similar goals to mine, where you want to travel comfortably, make high quality, fun travel videos, work with brands, work from your laptop, but without sacrificing that production quality, then you've come to the right place. All right, before we look at any of the gear I'm about to show you, I would just like to say that there is no sponsorships whatsoever in this video and there's also no affiliate links at the bottom of this video. Even though I probably should have some, I don't. I'm just giving you guys this hopefully valuable information because I know how much time I wasted looking at gear and deciding which camera I should buy and researching and watching and going over it. It's an endless, deep, dark black hole. So hopefully this information can help you make your decision. All right, so let's start with the bag. So this bag is expensive, but it's definitely worth it. So here's the wandered backpack. I wanted something that is waterproof and durable but also doesn't look so horrible like all the other camera bags out there. So this is a 31 liter. One of the reasons why I bought this bag was for this. You have the camera sections in the bottom and you have some extra room in the top. This is amazing. It's the side axis. You can just quickly go in and grab your camera. The roll top. If you ever have any extra stuff, you're not sure where to put it, this bag extends. Okay, on to the camera that I'm currently filming on now. And that is the Panasonic GH5. So, why this camera? It is very small. It is light, mirrorless camera with incredible power. It shoots 4K at 60 frames per second, 1080 at 180 frames per second. It is leading the market for in-body stabilization. It has a flip screen, which to me is very important. It shoots 20 megapixel photos, which is better than its competitor, the Sony a7S II, which shoots 12. Disadvantages to this camera, it is a crop sensor. It loses when it comes to low light and dynamic range. So that brings us to lenses. We're going to start with the widest lenses and move to the longest lenses. That begins our first lens is the 7 to 14 wide angle lens. This lens is great for tight spaces, urban photography, and wonderful for astrophotography. The next lens is a 12 to 35, which is on the camera now. It is a fixed f2.8 throughout the range, and it is great for run and gun photography. All around great lens, it is also stabilized. Next lens is this tiny 42.5 f1.7. This thing is so small, but it's so crisp and kicks out a nice bouquet. And finally, we have the 45 to 200. Great for wildlife photography, great for birds or shooting anything that's far away. So these lenses are all really small, which is really important for me as I'm always trying to stay as light and as small as possible. All right, next up we have the drone and I protect the drone in this tiny little case, the Mavic. Is it the best drone? No. Is it the smallest drone? No. Is it the best smallest drone? Yes. That's always the goal here for, for my backpack is what's the best, but what's the smallest? Trying to sacrifice the least amount of quality, but stay small. So this you carry it with you on any shoot and it is amazing in the daylight. Suffers a little bit in the low light, but you can fix that up with a little bit of noise reduction in post. Honestly, I would love to have an Inspire 2 with me, but unfortunately I don't have the money to hire a porter 
to walk around and carry that massive thing with me. So I'm not gonna carry an extra bag, I'm just gonna chuck this in the top of mine. Look at how compact this controller is with the case. On to other cameras, GoPro Hero 4. Do I need to upgrade? I don't believe so. The specs haven't really improved in the GoPro. The 5 is waterproof. I have this case, so it's fine with me. And the 6 has a few other improvements, but I honestly don't use the GoPro that much. When I have some action shots like biking, snowboarding, driving a car, underwater, diving, this GoPro will do just fine. Next camera is not really a camera, but it's my phone. It is the iPhone SE. The reason why I got the SE is again, because it is small, fits in your pocket quite nicely. It has 4K video, 1080 by 120. I filmed my whole entire Myanmar video on just this phone alone. Yes, the sensor is absolutely tiny in this thing. I probably won't be filming any more videos on it, but I really wanted to show just how much you can get out of your phone. This also passes as a great like pocket pistol. So you pull it out and boom, you're getting the action right away. If you can't open a bag up and pull out a lens, throw it on your DSLR, you can vlog with it. Not bad. If I was to get a new camera, I would probably get the tiny RX Sony RX100 vlog camera. And that is so small and so fast. That way you don't have to set up a mic and change your lens on your DSLR to a wide one. All right, the microphone. Now this is a regret of mine. It is huge. This is not where I'm practicing what I preach. I got the Aperture mic. I should have got a Rode mic. This was $100 cheaper than the Rode mic, which is why I got it, but it is too big for my liking. This thing is bulky and the audio is not that amazing. Stabilization. So here we have the Jiyun Crane version two. The Ronin or the Movi is probably better than this, but look at how small this is. I can just pop this bottom part off and it goes nicely into the bottom part of my bag. This goes into the top. It allows me to carry it everywhere versus another case like the Ronin or the Movi needs. MacBook Pro 13 inch. Sure, I would like a 15 inch. It would be nicer, get better display, but again, what's the goal? We're trying to stay small. Hard drive, lacy, rugged hard drive, five terabytes. That holds everything I need while I'm on the road. Gorilla Pod. Sure, I would love to have a tripod with me all the time, but it is too bulky and too heavy. So sometimes I have to get creative and stick this thing up on top of a garbage can or something if I need a good tripod shot. Xiaomi power bank. This is good for about four phone charges and sometimes I use it if I'm out of batteries and I forgot to charge some batteries, this will do that as well. Camera strap. So you push out your camera forward like this and you balance it and that acts as a single axis by having your camera stabilize like that for handheld footage. Lens pen. Wow, this is really dirty. And lastly, I carry a little pouch for my batteries. I have two extra GoPro batteries and two extra Lumix batteries. All right, that is it for my gear. So again, the goal is to stay as small as possible, as lightweight as possible, but maintaining that high production value. Brands are only going to hire and pay for our work if it is of exceptional quality. So I believe this gear that I have is the best for a nomadic style life. We are constantly on the road, have to wear all of your gear from place to place. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you can find the gear that aligns with your goals. Don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you aren't already. And we will see you later.